Honestly, maybe I was just bad. That yeah. could have been it too. Maybe that's why I'm here. Uh, you never know. <laughs> yeah. that, that got dark real fast. <laughs> but we're going to get to, it's going to be the ruined stage here. A stage that historically we've seen a lot of variety, but it, particularly in this season, it has been something that's been very 3 3 based. And, you know, Dogman, he's been a little bit of Pogman recently. Don't think that Genji's for real. The Genji. Very unlikely to be coming out here. Most teams more than likely going to be rolling out with that. With that, uh, the both teams running mirror. Actually, first and decided oh. to run Zafri on the Doom. They're going to want to try to get that engage those stuns out from the Doom. You know, some might say Zafri is sparkling right now as he comes out here with this option. I'd like to see it. Doomfist sometimes can crush goats, but it is a hard ask. We'll see if Zapri has what it takes. Zapri looking, they're just looking for the gauge right now. Zapri just hunting. He's right now looking for that gauge. He's on the statue, anything to come out. He gets the uppercut. He gets oh! pinned, but the bubble saved, and now the fight's just gonna break down on point. That could have ended very bad for him. The bubble gonna save him just in the nick of time. First gen, throw him back a little bit. They really need the Doofus to get pick off. Zapri going in again, and he's immediately melted down. Zapri has the fight immediately, and here's the problem. You're all in on the Doom Fist, and the Doom Fist is all out. The rest of you, you're getting thrown out in short order as well. The fight now just being cleaned up for Atlanta on the point. The problem with the Doom Fist is if you don't set up those engages properly, if he's not hunting the backline, setting up a combo play for your team, he's going to get caught out like that. He did get a great bubble, but there was just no way that you get anything off of it because you had to use cooldowns to save him. Submit to the harsh, unyielding rule of the meta. Go to Zarya Zapri. That's what he's done. Is that, is that their play that they've been making on first gen? They are going to roll yeah. out right here in mid. And Rob actually going to be on Ana instead of that traditional Zen that we can see while Atlanta Academy engages, gets Zapri Ooh. early, and they're going to keep chasing. You know, same hero, di or different hero, same result in the very end. Atlanta, trademark aggressiveness coming in to take it right to first gen. And, you know, Rob, to some degree, you just got to give the people what you want, right? There are traditions to Rob using his ult and. Look, uh, what, how does Nano Boost affect this here? Nano Boost will allow them to have very strong engages, especially off of Trance. If they do not have that cooldown, Nano, Nano Boost allows Nomi in particular, and even Naga, to be very strong, be very frag heavy. But they're just going to be pushing them back out of the spawn, making sure they don't have free space. Atlanta right now going to be backing up, but you look to what they have, right? They have so many tools. Saucy holding on to the grab right now, going to be the one to likely set this up. And Gator finds Rob somehow early on. Atlanta, now the man advantage, they just, they go forward. It's easy mode for them, and now they only need one more fight. Atlanta being so aggressive again, using this aggression, using this play, and I don't know if we've talked about it yet, but with Hawk is on that Winston. Hawk is playing, they're playing that Gladiator's Legion comp. Yep. They're allowing to be very aggressive on their gauges, and also Gator getting two pick kills now. And for both engages is giant. Ryan should never be able to get two picks while charging in the GOATS meta. He's just reading it so well right now in regards to the flow of how things are going on. Last opportunity here for first gen. Nano boost in reserve. Early hammer coming in. And can they go on it? They're looking for Hawk, but Hawk's able to get away. Meanwhile, Saucy still holding on to the grab. First gen's invested the barrier. Grab comes out. We're looking at the side. Gator booped off. But Atlanta still decent here. And you can see first gen can't even get to the point. Know me. Getting off the map, being taken off the map by Gator there, making sure they do not have anyone to touch the point there. He was stopping anyone from being able to touch. They caught them in the grab as well, so they weren't able oh. to touch the point. Right there. That's where they, that's where he just takes them off. It's yeah, over. that was the angle. He got nano boost and Gator goes, actually, I'm gonna make this a great play. You can be charged up with all the electricity. Let me show you, my friend, gravity. Well played from Atlanta. Atlanta using that aggression, really capitalize on the, on that. They have a Zen. Dogman is on Zen. Rob is on Ana. That means you have so much more damage. You are able to fight. The longer a fight goes, the better it is for you because Zen Orb just makes it much easier to continue the fight. So as we go here to the Lighthouse stage, there will be a change up. Hawk, no longer the Winston, going the Diva. His bread and butter. Both teams going to be looking to get in each other's faces here early on. Atlanta getting back on that traditional comp for them. No Winston, as you just... As you just noted, Hawk on that D.Va, which we've seen him do so much more recently, bubbles out for both teams as they move towards the point. And you see Atlanta again, taking the fight the first gen. First gen gets over to the point early, but Atlanta being a lot more aggressive and trying to initiate this. Hui eating a lot of damage early on. Atlanta knows it. They're going in even deeper. They see the weakness, they finish off Nomi, and they're gonna go even further. Just textbook from Atlanta. They don't really get freaked out over the fact that they weren't on point first. They play slower, looking to get those cooldowns out of first gen. And once again, Gator gets the charge kill, which we just talked about earlier. You could, you should not be getting charge kills in a dry it fight, in a fight where no ults are on the field, we are not setting up a grab. You shouldn't be able to. You should be melted. They're under no circumstances should be getting those kills. So well played from Gator. This has arguably been the best mechanical game we've seen from Gator so far, on top of shot calling that clearly has been top in class. 
top of class at every at every part along with Atlanta. They're coming through the choke now for first gen, looking for to gauge the old economy, not in their favor at all. Atlanta so far ahead. Gator gonna drop the hammer, does not get the step he was looking for. Instead, goes your way, but Naga down immediately. Sugar free was able to find him, and there's gonna be the easy cleanup. The bomb wasn't even needed. A lot of ults invested for Atlanta, and not a lot for first gen. Nomi did drop the shadow, didn't get much out of it. But Atlanta, look at all those ults now that are off the field. Ajax, the only one coming up on a beat. This is first gen's opportunity to come use their an ult advantage and just roll the point. Well, the key is that they have to recognize that they have that advantage to begin with, where they've been so tentative as Atlanta has been in their face the entire time. That gets to you on a psychological level. But we're going to get into it right now. First gen, they're not going to waste much time. They're going to go in. And you're going to see Tensi drop the beat early on. And now you go for it. Gator, under pressure, chunked down low. But what a barrier! Dogman saved. He was about to get down. Zafri still doesn't care about the tunes, finishes him off. Man advantage of first gen. Back over now to put a charge off the side again. But I don't think that's going to be enough. No, that should be it. The cleanup is on the point for first gen. Even if Zafri's getting a little isolated from his team. Gator taking off Nomi. Cheeky. But now you you don't have Gator. You don't have a shield or that damage from the Ryan for the fight either. So they were just looking for delay, looking to get a pick as they stagger Hawk. At some point for Gator, even though he didn't have to do that there, are you doing it just to tilt Nomi? I wouldn't say tilt is the primary reason, but it's definitely a motivator. It's fun. It is fun. It is useful to cause, to cause that tilt, make you spin off Axis a little bit. But really, just removing that, that Ryan from the fight, less damage on the point for first gen, but also less for Atlanta. Now, Atlanta, they've built up ults of their own now. They have that time back add as well. They should look for an engage. It's still something that first gen is favored here for. Look at Zapri. He's going to open up here with the grab. Ball through coming in. Diva bomb over the top. Gator already down, and the explosion finishes off hot. That's going to be enough. First gen with two successful fights in a row. Atlanta, though, plenty of time to work with. Great combo right there. Just getting the frags you need, not having to invest anything else. And they're just continuing to build those ults, continuing to get Naga up to the rally, Tencent to the beat. If they have those support ults, they can survive this upcoming fight. They can even dry fight because it is not 99. First gen taking interesting position here on the top. Under pressure, Nomi looking to drop the hammer right there. Charged again! Gator finding him off the raw charge! Nomi is all he can find, and it so works out. Atlanta easily blitzes onto the point. Investing in a rally as well, just the guarantee and the grab, not using the Diva Bomb. But once again, Gator getting the charge, recognizing that Zapri wasn't on high ground. He can't bubble Nomi. He can't save them. So why not just charge as they still oh. go and show so aggressive here and spawn? They're going to charge in. Nomi drops the hammer, though, and this could come back to bite Atlanta. It is. They lose Gator and Sugar Free immediately. First Jet should be able to ride this wave right back over to the point. And now it's a one fight mark. They got a touch point first, though. They can't get distracted. Someone get on the point. They do. Great engage there for first gen. Nomi getting the shadow down, preventing them from being able to be very aggressive as Atlanta went into spawn. Ambitious for Atlanta. Very ambitious. They were looking to cash them by surprise, get ult out of first gen. They did get the shatter, but in return, they fed ult charge to the rest of first gen. It's very tough for Atlanta, too, because they also fed away time. Now it's a area where Atlanta could very well lose the round. This is a fight they must win. One fight territory. Gator leading the way. Sugar Free, ready to set up the Bash combination here. So Atlanta, they're just measuring the side. There, what a shatter! Not set up by the Bash at all, but the ball through is not quite there. The team wasn't ready. First gen, gonna counter with the Transcendence. Both sets getting into it. Barrier, now in for Atlanta, in for both sides. You see the ground out. Dogman First off the okay. from the He's bomb, gone. though. This is it, they all have to play around Rob. If they play around Rob, that is it for First gen. That bomb is huge. Nice play from First gen, able to fight their way back in. Sugar Free, one last few on the point. And look, Brigida kill will be scary, Sugar Freeze especially, but he's gonna get taken down and Rob Dobb shouldn't be enough here. This should be first gen's round. Ajax should be cleaned up shortly. There is gonna be the ball and Mora just stagger coming out for Atlanta, but there's so much damage on the point. The Brigida, the Lucio, highly charged Zarya. Late grab. And yeah. that's it. That bomb, especially with the shatter from Nomi, keeping Dogman on the ground to where he couldn't escape, right here. He gets The bomb doesn't directly kill Dogman, but the blast sends him off the map, and they cannot finish it up. Yeah, you take all your Dogman in this moment. And, yeah. One thing that's worth... Bye-bye, <laughs> Dogman. Bye-bye. Yeah. One thing that's worth noting here is that maybe this is just that everyone's been a Smash Brothers move as a... or mood as of late. But there's a term there called SDs, or self-deaths. I feel like this round to a degree was a self-death for Atlanta Academy because they had such a big edge. Do you really have to go to spawn the way they did? No, you don't always have to be that aggressive. In fact, they were a little over-aggressive because they weren't even that far ahead in the ult economy or that far behind. It was a fairly even fight and they wanted to catch them, but they didn't expect Nomi Shatter and that cost them dearly. So Nomi able to punish them for their hubris. 
And now we move to a whole lot of variety here. We got McCree Hanzo, and it's for real, coming in for Atlanta. The Doomfist again for Zafri, looking for that engage. And this is actually a great composition for this. If you just run into the Orisa, we've talked about before for Ghosts, just take out the Orisa, run into them. Zafri, a little bit of poke there, dashes in, decides he's gonna dash on out, and now we go again, looking for the Orisa. It's a big chunk to Gator. Gator needs to back up, Sugar Free down already, and now First Gen, they have everything they need. They start moving in, they get the cleanup, and this should be a first take, so the Doomfist play working out for it. Yeah, and getting a little bit of stagger on Hawk, not that much. Great play from First Gen, recognizing they're running Hanzo, they're running McCree, they don't have the Ryan, just Run into them. Just, yeah. just run in W. It's time to use the W key, go into them, and they use it effectively. And now Zapri close to the Doom Pistol. And Doom Pistol is actually very strong on this particular map because of all these choke points. Well, because of the well in the middle, it just spaces you around in these very tiny areas. And we'll see how this works out. Zapri was already looking for early poke, backs on out, but cooldowns back up, moves in. Exchanges out, gets stunned, and Nomi down immediately. Atlanta actually able to deal with that initial Doom Fist pressure, and now he's got the Meteor Strike to even it up. They're down one, drops on in, gets two! Zapri bringing the fight back now for first gen. Zapri getting that value out of the old is gigantic for first gen, meaning they can still stay here even without Nomi. The fight's just breaking out on point. Dogman, but the boot from Naga with the flail. Sugar Freeze off the map. Rally now for first gen. They can out-sustain. They can out-sustain Atlanta on point. This is actually really good for first gen because it's baiting Atlanta into going into this fight even longer. A fight that they have no hope to actually win. So this is more time, more percentage, and perhaps most importantly, even more ult charge for first gen. They are now in a great position to take this first map. Uncharacteristic for Atlanta as well. We've talked about how they've always been so so smooth, so clean with using their ults, making sure not to invest them in lost fights. That was a lost fight. It was a fight you realistically should not have been investing ults into. And now they're in such a gigantic time and ult disadvantage. Atlanta on the break. This is where they need a hero play, even though first gen has the advantage. Huey from the flank, gonna drop the grab. All crews are gonna be there. Counter grab now in from Atlanta, and it works out in their favor. They pick up two. Hawk moving on in. It's three for Hawk. And now Atlanta Academy can come back in and have a little bit of life in this round. A lot of ults invested for both sides on that repush. They're also going to stagger Rob. Rob dying a little late there. Not what you want to see because now they're going to have to wait for Rob. They're going to have to come. And he's a little slow. Zen, not a very fast character. But First Gen has both of their support ults. And Atlanta does not have grab. This is First Gen's opportunity to just take the fight aggressively into them. This is the moment where if they don't win this fight, this is the VOD review of, oh god, what did we do? That would be a very depressing VOD review because the advantages are all in first gen's favor, especially with Naga coming out on that rally. The engage happens. Zapri, Saucy, one HP, he and so he close. gets him, he gets him off the map. Still got him anyways. Two pickups for first gen. This could be it. It could be the early upset map. They just need a little bit more. Zapri holding on to the meteor strike, looking for the break. Sugar free gonna fall. And first gen now able to move on to the point. Atlanta is gonna be full desperation mode to bring this one back. Well played for both Zapri and Tinsa, recognizing that advantage, using the beat aggressively, taking the fight into them, and Zapri while he's isolating Saucy. Now First Gen is in complete control. They have the positional advantage. They have the ults. This is their time to win. And Zapri, this is his time to take away the chances to win. The Meteor Strike in the back. Gets stunned immediately, and it's going to force him the Meteor Strike. Uses it right away. Goes for Hawk, who's on the ground. Hawk going to lose the mech immediately. We're in overtime. First Gen. Oh, what a boom! Ajax gets Huey off the map, but it's not going to be enough. First Gen, it was too good of an engage. Zapri set the stage by getting rid of Hawk. And first generation, shocking Atlanta to as start off the day. As long as they don't get booped by Ajax uh -oh. and get her game. Ajax gets another boop on Naga. He, will he be stopped? He's a menace. Okay, Zafri decides to finally take him out. But now the stagger is in for Atlanta. They could potentially touch long enough. No, never no, mind. They're no. cleaning up on point. Zafri you are too optimistic. There are too many people falling, even though you got to give credit to Ajax. He was still fighting. Ajax, I mean... Doing yeah. the Lord's work there with the boops. As we talked about earlier, boops, very important for the uh, the Lucio hero. And it was a good map for it, but first gen playing so well. Even though they came out a little shaky, they were able to utilize his Doomfist, recognize their advantages, and just take the yep. fight into them. And that's all you need to do. That's all you need to do in Goats, is recognize those advantages and play your comp well. And just to carry on this analogy for one final time, look, in Smash, that's why you don't give away a stock. For Atlanta, it's why you don't give away a fight when they could have done this in two rounds. They go way too over-aggressive, and they give Atlanta the opportunity to even make this close, to even make a comeback on the third round. It was self-inflicted, and first gen, they're too good to make those mistakes against. Overconfident with that aggression, like we just spoke about, especially with first gen being a very aggressive team themselves. Yeah. Aggression can punish teams that are 
maybe a little bit more passive, love to set up their play slower, maybe don't have a clear decision, but First Gen is a very aggressive team. They like mm. to take the fight aggressively, maybe even recklessly, and that is where Atlantis play they weren't taking into account how Fershin wanted to play the map. Also, again, we look at strength of schedule, right? This is easily the strongest team that Atlanta has played all season long. And this is a team that you can't get away with some of these mistakes that Atlanta was making. Versus weaker teams, you know what? They're not good enough to punish you. They're not good enough to go, oh, you're in our spot. I guess we just die. That's not first gen. First gen goes, oh, you're in our spawn. Hey, know me. Knock them on the ground. Well played from first gen. Atlanta is still having a good map. Their weakness is getting exploited by the aggression of first gen, wreck it, making the right choices, using their ults properly, making sure to recognize their advantages. Like right here, we see this grab. They just swap, they just swap sides. It was the classic, we're attacking the point, but we're just gonna actually take the high ground here. And this is where first gen forced Atlanta to invest so many ults in that fight, despite them being, it was a very clearly losing fight. And that is the key, ult economy. When you're in a fight that you're not gonna win, first gen playing very smart. Yeah, and again, I just think it's a situation Atlanta hasn't really been used to all season long, where they're just like, oh, we've thrown a few extra ults into the fight. Does it matter? Nah, because they weren't really losing fights ever. First gen, though, they were able to really just take it to them, and I, I think Atlanta was a little bit shell-shocked as we went into round three, which means now that for a very weird feeling for Atlanta, they're going to have to find out how they dig themselves out of a hole, but it also means we get to see what maps they like to pick going into this hybrid round that's on the way up. So where do you think Atlanta's going to bring it, given that they do feel themselves masters of the 3-3? They could realistically take it on just about any map. It looks like they've chosen Numbani. You know, this is a little bit weird. I thought for sure they would go to something like King's Row that plays a little bit more into it. But do you think we almost have some sort of weird scrim influence here where because so many teams like Nambani that you have to prep on Nambani a lot and Nambani inadvertently becomes your most prepped map? Maybe, but Atlanta has looked very strong on Nambani. They've looked strong on all their maps, yes. realistically. But Gator also showing that proficiency on Winston in that dive goats as well. They've played very strongly around Gator, both Winston and Ryan. So maybe they feel very comfortable playing a little bit more mobile compositions if they choose to. Also even using the Ryan to clear them off high ground. They're just, they're great at Nambani. They've been shown historically they've been great on the map and in hybrid in general. They just need to not play into first gen's hand as much and make sure that they're playing not always aggressive, recognizing their disadvantages and their advantages in a fight because it seems like they're just used to like, we're gonna walk forward, we're gonna frag and no one's gonna stop us. <laughs> but first gen did stop them because they have a lot of fraggers as well. It's almost kind of one of those situations where it's like, wait, you mean to tell me that my strats and Grandmaster don't work in top 500? What's going on here? Because in a sense, Atlanta, by fighting first gen, it, they've almost gone up a tier, right, from what we've seen from the overall team so far. And look, you have to have an adjustment period here. Uh, things that weren't getting punished before, now they're getting punished. So I, I am curious to see how Atlanta is going to adapt here. Maybe it means on Nambani they tone down the spice a little bit. They don't go full, hey, we're in your spawn on point A because we think that's cool. I, I am just curious to see if this is a change in attitude or they just come back business as usual. You shouldn't necessarily change your attitude either when facing a team. Just adjust your play style a little bit. Your attitude is what <laughs> defines you. It helps what makes you great. And Atlanta's aggressive attitude has helped them a lot by exploiting weaknesses and being just that very unchecked aggression that other yeah. teams have to deal with. You shouldn't change your attitude. You should just, you know, mellow it out a little bit. You know, you're, you're growing older. You're growing wiser. You've suffered a few losses now. Well, a map loss, realistically. Not, <laughs> not, 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 no losses yet. But temper yourself and make sure your attitude is working with the situation. And because that's what defines you as a team. I just imagine Fusion University just patting Atlanta on the shoulder now and being like, guys, guys, map losses build character. You're actually not a real team until you let them bring <laughs> you to five. That's where the real stuff happens. Preferably third round also. Fusion Uni definitely has a uh, mastery of the going to map five, but still winning continuously. Yeah. Just, just keeping it right on the edge, the tightrope walk of making sure not mm. to lose, but almost losing to give you the hope. That is their, that's their attitude, you know? They're perfectly polished, but also not polished at the same time. Yep. It's some weird paradox like Schrodinger thing that we have going on with Fusion Uni, mm. where they look good and bad. How many times can one team be brought to map five and not lose that map five? Like, you feel like the odds at some point would have caught up, and it's like, surely they'll lose this time, and hasn't been the case for Fusion University. But speaking of Fusion University, while we're waiting for the players to get in here, and okay, they're in. I'll finish my thought anyways. I, I would say is that- No, it's too late. No. You Don't. You're, you're I, won't, I won't have it. Yeah, okay. I won't have it. Well, we, we will save it for another time. It's in suspense. That's right. Is where Put that, that is. right in stasis. You were about to continue it, but I've, I've called against it. All right. Well, now that we're canceling this thought, Christmas is canceled. The people might never know what it is. What do they need to know here about Nambani? 
Well, first, look at Atlanta's comp. They have that dive. They have that dive goats. It's going to be the Winston. They have the Hawk on D.Va. Pretty much, they're very confident in their play. They want to utilize Gator's leadership and his proficiency on both Winston and Reinhardt here to sort of just pop off. First gen, we don't really know what they're going to do yet, but I expect goats. I do expect goats, but it seems like they really want to try to play Renny and Zapri on the Doomfist as well. You don't expect Nomi to begin his budding career as a Bastion name? No, we have seen Bastion in our in our previous games, <laughs> is, even against Atlanta, but I doubt that Bastion will be making an appearance. It would really just be Nomi as Bastion. You're just like, wow, that, that is a career trajectory right there. But no, he's going to be going to Winston, but I do think the Doomfist is for real. The Doomfist is for real. They really want to be running Zapri on that Doomfist. Nope. I've been baited. Yeah. I shouldn't have. I, we both got baited there. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we went in too deep, and that's why you don't. Instead, they're going to be running very standard dive-esque goat setup. Atlanta, we'll see how they deal. Looks like they're just going to try to take this high ground. We've seen it before. Force them off high ground. Try to get them in a position on point or maybe in a corner. Bubbles are out. Now the fight breaks down. And already, Nomi getting chunked. Dogman right there. Going to bounce off a little bit. Doesn't want to get end up focused and nice heals coming in here from Atlanta where a lot of people got low but they just got out of the fight in the nick of time. The beauty of playing defensively on this high ground is you can use your bubbles and your armor pack reactively rather than in a very proactive manner where you have to use it to get in. The, it just gives you more health in the fight, more, more longevity and that is what Atlanta is looking to do. First gen, I don't even think they should be trying to approach from top left, they should be trying to move from a different angle, utilize their mobility. I think they're actually just trying to give Hui a little and bit cover right now again to his yeah. mech. It's like, do you have your mech yet? No. Soon? Yeah, okay, he has it now. Right now, Atlanta still building up these ults. Look how look at the ult advantage for Saucy. Saucy's at almost has grab here in this fight. He could use it in fight. No, Nomi's getting chunked, so is Huey. But first gen able to back out a little bit. You have the grab though. The grab just so devastating early on. No real answer for first gen in that fight, but you just gotta look at the tank focus here. As soon as Nomi and Huey go in, they're going straight down and oh, this is a stagger. They found Rob. He's Rest off. in peace. Rest in peace, Rob. But Saucy playing extremely well, and that is the power of Atlanta's hold when First Gen wants to take the fight into them top left. Because you are allowing Saucy to mortar you with a million HP. You're you make it who he has to be eating those. You cannot be eating all that damage in that early, in that small choke. But it looks like they may be swapping off their approach. No, they're not. They want to take it here again. Surely they won't expect us going for the high ground another time in a row. Get her though. Rally in. No me in. But he buffs the jump, he flops it. Yeah, he's off, and Gator also Primal Rage ready, so he's going in, he's just looking for 10 seconds, and he gets him! Doesn't even have to use the Primal right away. Gonna use it a little bit later in the fight, but for Shen, you're down one, they can't even sneak a tick, and Gator just gonna delay this as long as possible, make it as painful as possible for the offense, and we're already down two minutes. I would really like for Shen to swap their approach. They have a composition that's very strong on this point. It's not a composition issue, it's an approach issue. They're just going through a choke, letting Saucy get all his value. He's already 53% on another grab on Numbani first, which is a point that does not always value Zarya's and their ability they're, to get damage. They're doing it again. They're, they're playing this like they're using a Reinhardt and not a Winston. Is, is this Hanamura 2.0? Are we watching it live right here? I, we might be. I, this is the same approach over and over again. Okay, a slight changeup, but nobody coming from the side. Grab in from Zapri. Pulls in a lot. Bob over the top. Sugar Green Saucy down. That's going to be enough from first gen, but man, that was a struggle. A lot needed to be invested as well. They had to use Nomi's ult, Zapri, and Hui. Three ults there to get that to get that fight. Dogman using the transfer zone. But Atlanta can be happy with that first a lot of time off the clock, and they'll be coming back with a grab, with a beat of their own. This, they can take an early fight. General rule in Overwatch is a two-minute defense on first. That's good. Three minutes, great. Full hold, of course, that's a dream. But for first gen, or for Atlanta, they have to feel really good about how that went down. Both sides now swapping to that Reinhardt instead of the Winston for the streets phase. A lot more brawl on the cart. Holding so close, so aggressively in this one. Catching Nomi as he comes out. Saucy holding on to the grab. Real close to the spawn. Very up for first gen. Saucy doesn't care. They use the grab to take down Zapri. Comes out of cost. Gator out of the fight. Five on five. Spawn advantage here in the first gen. And remember, it is a long, long walk back for anyone that falls here for Atlanta. And they're still fighting it. They're still going in. They almost get the d -mech, but not quite. Nomi under pressure. Healed back up just in the nick of time. Discord Orb was on him. And Atlanta holding strong, but here's the problem. It's going to be a power play for first gen. They are back up to six. They drop the hammer. One knock down to the back, but the follow through not quite there. Atlanta's buying so much time. Gator is, is going to be back. Gator is here in the fight. The bomb's out. Saucy drops the grab now. They don't have a trance. There's no trance on the side oh, first gen. Unbelievable. They're still holding here. That was a five on six for so long. And Atlanta pushes them back and spawn. 
pure willpower being exerted here onto first gen. Atlanta playing that so well, even when being down Gator, using those ults to sustain them in the fight, allowing Gator to come back. You have so much health, so much sustain on the side. When you're running goats, they're just boxing them. And now the, the grab's gonna come out. There is no combo though for first gen. That was a really early grab. It's like, I see a bunch of people together. I don't know if the Falter's there, but it does work out in the end. Ajax caught in the back. Too much focus fire on Gator, and you might be able to hold this five on six. You're not going to do it four on six. It's way too long without reinforcement. So first gen, they're going to break through here. Well placed grab for Zafri. Even though it was early and they didn't have that combo, they know they didn't have support ults yet. Ajax is coming close, but good focus to ensure the beat didn't come out on the side of Atlanta. And now first gen, they finally broken out of their spawn, and their ult economy is looking really strong. So for Atlanta, what is a win here in this next fight? In this fight, if they take it too slow, they have to be taking this fight way earlier because this is coming to the last fight for second point territory. If you do not get a fight earlier, they're going to be able to push before you come back. Atlanta has to get a single pick, any pick, to, to neutralize this poor dad, man. First gen, they know it. They're going to use the rally early on. Oh, what a hammer! Gator drops it right away. They use it to get two. That's exactly what Atlanta needed. Not able to utilize their support ults effectively there on the side of first gen either. They had both support ults up. It seems like they predetermined that Tinsa would beat first. Maybe did Rob? I didn't see Rob getting caught in that Earth Shatter either. So maybe a miscommunication there. Not able to use the trance to keep people alive. And that's big now for Atlanta. They can get back to the spot they would love to be at, which is being really high up. We're down to the final minute. First gen is almost out of tries. Atlanta does have that combo as well. It's so strong. Both support ults, they can run in with Ajax's beat. Be very proactive. I love to see the beat being used proactively and just try to force the fight and wipe them. It's a saucy hot combination here. Really what they're looking for. Saucy evaluating the terrain. Gator leading the way. Grab still in reserve. Hawk ready and waiting. Took a lot of damage early on. You see Saucy going in. It's a self-destruct back the way. Here's the grab. Where's the bomb? Hawk. Gonna let it fly. And no, we're not gonna get anything here. It was a little bit earlier in the fight. Transcendence now being traded out between both teams. Barrier in from Atlanta, fighting tooth and nail. They want to end this. Right now, they get Nomi. They're well on their way. Gator drops the hammer. And is that gonna be enough? It is. That is definitely gonna be it. Focusing Nomi as well to make sure there was no Rhine Shield in, in play for Gator to worry about. He's able to drop the Shatter despite the grab for Zapri. Clean it up. Well played from Atlanta. That aggression and spawn, that is the Atlanta we like to see. They didn't overcommit. They didn't undercommit. Even when they were down players, they utilized their ult effectively to sustain. It's new age Nambani defense where you think about it, especially historically, especially throughout Overwatch League Season 1, and just really throughout the annals of Overwatch history, period. Nambani point B is not a place that you see people get held at. It just, it really isn't. But this new style of the body defense, which has evolved over time from more teams than just Atlanta, it just gets in your face constantly. It just goes, you know what? We have to be the attackers even though we're on defense. And it buys them so much time. Buying the time, getting the time off the clock, building up your ult advantage, and even allowing Gator to come back right here. We see that late trance. This is a very long fight, but Dogman popping the trance late ensures everyone stays alive for Gator to get there, and they continue to keep them boxed on that choke, using the spawn doors against them well played from Atlanta, not giving them any room. First gen, also a misplay by not being aggressive together. If you have Nomi, they don't have Gator, why don't you just all walk forward together? Bring up your backline. You have a shield, you have that fragging potential. First gen just allowing themselves to take a lot of damage and not really moving cohesively. Even if they'd taken a breather back for just a moment, you just clear heads need to prevail, right? At some point, math is surprisingly your best friend in Overwatch. It's sort of that simple addition subtraction of, hey, do we have six players? Do they have five? Is six a greater number than five? All right, we can really abuse this fight. And it, it, the light bulb never really turned on for first gen there. Not just having six players, but your sixth player being the big rectangle man, <laughs> which has the big rectangle, as for mentioned, which you can walk behind, absorb that damage, and it allows your backline to be more aggressive, to get more damage, to get more pressure. Atlanta, I doubt they're gonna run this comp. Gator more than likely scouting. We've seen this before, using the Sombra while you're on offense to see the composition of defense and where they're holding. It would be rather high levels of disrespect, but no, Saucy's gonna be going over to the Zarya Gator, to the Reinhardt, where, look, I mean, I was down for the offensive tour, but probably not happening, at least not this meta, probably not our lifetimes. This is actually very smart from Atlanta, choosing now to run the Reinhardt if you're gonna fight this battle on top left, instead of the Winston. Reinhardt, that gives you the ability to take the spam damage, to mitigate it, and have a hammer to swing. This is the proper tool for the job. 
you not use the Winston, you're using the Reinhardt, you give yourself way more space control here on top, and they do effectively just evict first gen, but it's not long eviction, they decide they want to jump on down, Sugar Free getting low, but getting healed up all the while, Gator and Sugar Free on a knife's edge there, but now they turn it the other way and they find Naga, and with a six on five, Atlanta now can take their time as they get on the point. Popping the rally as well, just to give them sustain, the armor so valuable, e still useful, even when a fight's broken down, because you get armor for the next fight. Good boop from Ajax as well. To bring Naga back into the team of Atlanta and then just frag him, you have the sustain, you have the frontline presence. Well played, and like you said earlier, ZP, that was the right tool for the job. When they brought up their Swiss Army Knight of a potential hero select screen, they chose Reinhardt if they're gonna fight top left, not Winston. Yep, yeah, and he's really good for that, particularly on the offense. And all right, they are really in a spawn right now. First gen getting no reprieve. Atlanta going for it. Hawk with the follow through. They get three. Why is this battle taking place here? And how is it so darn effective? They, they run forward to catch them in oh, the early spawn. Saucy. That's a full wipe. The disrespect. Oh. That was a full wipe, CP. They choose, They know they're getting forward spawns. They know they're getting the close spawn. They run to the spawn doors, body block them within there, and pop ults, make them commit to get out, and they have so much time, and they've staggered them. I mean, they did everything but just spit on the corpse at the very end. That was brutal. Wow, that is metal. That is a metal description. <laughs> Well, first gen, they're gonna have to be metal if they want to bring this back. Four minutes and 20 seconds left to go right now. Grab in reserve, Zafri holding on to it. And we'll see what they do here. Holding, drops on down, not in, and bomb up over the top. It's a fight they're gonna get, but they still need so much more. A lot of time in the bank for Atlanta here. Great combo for first gen though. Getting the shields out from Sugar Free, getting the bubbles, no trance, well set up. That is what you want to see from your combo, but first gen, they have four minutes to hold here on streets. One of the toughest points to hold at. This is usually a game over. In, o in Overwatch history, this is done. It's done so. But I'm willing to believe that First Gen can bring this back, but it's going to be so hard. This is a risky move for First Gen. Holding close means that you are giving up your time ad. You're giving up a lot of that position ad. But they catch up Sugar Free. They manage to get him on the street somehow. He takes early spam. But Tinsa now down to Gator again to charges. And here's the problem is that it's a long run back and they have to hold pretty far up. This is not gonna work out for first gen. This is gonna backfire pretty heavily. They're positioning for the next fight. If they even have all six, it's gonna be bad. Rob wow, popping that trance late, making sure to keep Pooey himself alive on the point. Noe, this is last fight. This is last fight right here. Their, their gamble did not pay off, CP. They went to the no. spawn doors and they lost people. It was one fight marks no what. They should have been that far up. Noe dropping the hammer, but is Bob gonna be there? No, Ajax is healed back up. It's easy street right now for Atlanta. They're gonna roll it on over. They're gonna even up the series. One to one. First gen playing, pulling their own Atlanta there. They, they pulled their own Atlanta yeah. where they were too aggressive. They didn't allow themselves to play their own advantage, play the time bank to build up their ult bank a little bit more, and instead they lost picks in the spawn again to some of Gator's charges. And that's a counter Atlanta, as I would say, just being way too aggressive for your own good. You know, if it wasn't going to be Atlanta's game, no matter what, I would say that was almost an honor trade, where it's just like, all right, you guys gave us Iliosa, let's give you a gift here, but it's an empty gesture because, frankly, Atlanta was dominating. What is this? Look at this, they, look, the doors, the barrier's still there, they body block them, <laughs> don't let them out, and now they force them to commit ults, and then they're gonna use ults of their own here and just win the fight. Great bomb from Hawk as well. That is just so despicably brutal, I love it. That is the spawn camp you want to be seen. That is the spawn camp that I like to see. <laughs> that is the spawn camp how you should be utilizing spawn camps in GOATS, knowing that you can leapfrog those advantages, knowing you can move together as a unit to catch some people on the doors, on that natural choke point. Well played from Atlanta there, and even more well played for them to use the, pu the top left push the right way with the Reinhardt, which is where yeah. Firstin didn't recognize, like, if we have Winston, Maybe we don't all walk through through this small choke point on top left where they control it. Perhaps we use some flanks. Perhaps we use verticality. But instead, they played into to Atlanta's hands the entire time. Well played. Good swaps from Atlanta. No doubt about it. Well, guys, I have to ask you. Do you love World of Warcraft? But do you absolutely support the Sky Foxes? Do you wish you could merge these two interests? Well, I got news for you. We got a special message here at the break.